Hello, readers, and happy Pride. Welcome to Pride Book Fest. My name is Lainey Rose. My pronouns are she, they. I am a bookseller and a book talker, and I am so excited to bring you this exclusive interview with Sophie Gonzalez and Kale Dietrich for If This Gets Out, one of the most highly anticipated queer books of the year. I'm here today on behalf of East City Bookshop, a woman-owned, community-focused indie bookstore located right in the heart of Washington, D.C. We're just a few blocks away from the Library of Congress and the U.S. Capitol building, but if you're not in the D.C. area, you can still shop online with us always. And that's particularly exciting for this event because we are doing a pre-order campaign with If This Gets Out. If you pre-order the book through our store, you are able to get signed book plates, which is very exciting because both Sophie and Kale are located in Australia, so those book plates are hard to come by, and if you're like me and you covet those signatures, you're going to want to make sure you get your pre-order in. Now, I've talked enough. I would love to hear from our two lovely authors, Sophie and Kale. Hi. <laughs> hello, hello. So, <laughs> so why don't you two uh, introduce yourselves a little bit? Sure. Sophie, do you want to go first? Okay, I'll go first, sure. <laughs> so um, my name is Sophie Gonzalez and I, oh, I should get my books. I am the author of Only Mostly Devastated and Perfect on Paper. <laughs> and I am the co-author of If This Gets Out with K Kale. And um, I'm generally just so excited to be here today. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm Kale Dietrich. Um, I'm the author of The Love Interest. I also wrote The Friends Game, which I couldn't find on my shelf like quickly enough. Um, and then I co wrote um, If This Gets Out. And yeah, also super, super hyped to be here. So yeah. Wonderful. Oh, and now it's he, him as well. So. Oh, yes. I am she, her. Fantastic. Thank you both so much. So tell us about this book. How would you describe it in your own words? Oh, um, yeah, so I would say it's a boy band romance, I feel like is how I would describe it um, in terms of a really quick pitch. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of, yeah, from there, Sophie? It is a romance about two guys who are in America's biggest boy band and they fall for each other and quickly find out that their management team have no intentions of ever letting the world know about their relationship. Fantastic. And where did this book begin for the both of you, both in the inspiration and this collaboration? Uh, Kale. It came yeah. from Kale. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess I guess the the initial start would be our our friendship, I guess, through Twitter and things like that, because we were talking all the time. Um, and yeah, and so basically, I had this idea, and I messaged Sophie about it, and was like, "Hey, what do you think about like a like a boy band like YA novel?" And she was like, "Yes, amazing, that's so good." Um, and then yeah, eventually, sort of brought up the collab idea, and yeah, kind of went from there. Um, yeah. Yeah, he was trying to be all like coy about it. He was like, "Oh yeah." Like <laughs> I was thinking that I might do it as a collab, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> collab with someone else. I'm going to be really good. And he was like, oh, good, because I was like building up to ask you. Because yeah. <laughs> we've been friends since like, 2014. He was really like, Pardon? Yeah, because nobody really talks about what it's like to ask someone to collab. Like, it's like a weird, like, you don't want to, like, it's really risky. Like, you don't want to be like, do you want to do it? Like you say, sort right. of like, yeah, test the waters out, be like, maybe? Like, yeah, so, um, but yeah, I think as soon as I floated the idea of a collab, Sophie was so like, yes, yeah, so it was like, cool. So, yeah. yeah. I love that. Do you and want to spend the next few years of your life with me? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and so what was it like to collaborate on this because you both have written books independently multiple books independently before so what was it like to write this together different yeah really different. really different <laughs> yeah fun. um like yeah yeah heaps of fun i think like there were two probably main things like on the difficult side there was a lot of adjustment for both of us because you know uh, for a start, we've got like quite different styles. Kayla's the kind of person who like really likes to just dive in and see where the story takes takes you and kind of let it get shaped by the characters. But I'm like, 
for my own books, I'm really quite methodical. So I'm like, I need to know where we're going before I can take my first step. So mm -hmm. we kind of had to like figure out how to get our two styles to mesh together. And I think we combined them pretty well in the end there. Yeah. Yeah, I totally think so. <laughs> but then like, on, on, I felt the coolest part was that when the way that we kind of wrote it was that we did the synopsis pretty early on so we knew what we were working towards generally and then we split up chapter by chapter so Kay would write a chapter send it to me I would write the next chapter send it to him and getting his chapters was a lot like getting the next update in like your favorite like say fan fiction book that you're reading um because it's like you're so invested you're very invested because it's like your characters you kind of know where it's going but you don't know what he's gonna do with it so mm -hmm. I'm like oh my gosh like what, what's gonna happen next right <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it always so exciting to get those chapters because, yeah, you exactly because you kind of you had like a, a rough idea of what you're going to do, but then you wouldn't know, like, what's Angel up to, you know, like what <laughs> going to be like, what chaos yeah. is he getting into now? So, stuff like that, you know, um, which was really, really fun. So, yeah, it's great. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. I, I love how the two writings went together. Super fun time. <laughs> So it's good. Well, actually, one. Oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Was one thing that we did that I think actually helped gel it together was that we wrote our own chapters, but then at, towards the end, we each went in and changed our character's dialogue in the other person's chapters. Mm -hmm. So, but the, the person who's writing gets to decide what the conversation is and what's kind of happening, but. I'm going in and changing Ruben's word choice. Kale's going in and changing Zach's word choice to actually make it sound like our characters are talking. That's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so in this book, they travel all over the world on the tour. The boys of Saturday are all over the globe. So tell us about the places on the map of the story. Have you been there? What made you choose this location? Oh. Yeah, so I've been to a few places when I was um, when I was younger. I was about like, is the audio going weird? Is that just for me? Um, I can I mean, hear. Playback. Um, but yeah, oh cool. Okay. Um, yeah, no. So I, when I was about fifteen, I went to a few of the places I've been to, like um, England, stuff like that. Um, but a, a while ago. So yeah. Um, as for research, we kind of sort of tracked. You know, we kind of mapped out where we thought a realistic tour would go. And so we kind of just yeah. was like, okay, look, if this was going to be a tour, we did quite a lot of research into figuring out where they would go and then kind of that dictated the spot, which was kind of fun because you'd be like, okay, yeah, great. I get to do it like here. Or so, you know, um, <laughs> it's really fun. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, one thing that we did was we looked at what other boy bands and just what other bands and big acts in general have done on their international tours. So kind mm -hmm. of said like, okay, so how long do they generally stay in each place? How many shows will they do? What's the kind of order? Where are these big stadiums? Like where do these big concerts usually take place? And um, I think we were getting like quite confused because there are so many locations in this book. It was crazy. So at one point, I remember I like took a Google map screenshot and just like drew a line of them traveling around. <laughs> like keep track of where they were and where they were about to go. Because otherwise it would have just gotten like copy edits would have been a nightmare. Um, and I've been to most of the places that we wrote about, which, you know, it was like, it's going to sound weird, but I haven't been to many places in America. I've only been to like California and New York. So for me, anyway, writing in Europe was a lot easier than when I usually write books in America. Cause I'm like, I've been there. I know what this is like. I, I know what it's like, what you're seeing. Yeah. That was yeah. really helpful. And what I just have to ask, like, what was your favorite place that they went to? I think France. Mm. France. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. I think it was all I just like the general tour setting. I think that's what I kind of liked, the sort of the, the constant movement that they had was I think really, really fun. Um so I kinda of like the whole like that it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't in, like you get to see little bits of each like country, which I thought was really, really fun. Um yeah. Kale got really set on Cologne. I remember that. Am I saying that right? I hope I'm saying yeah. that right. <laughs> I haven't offended a whole country. Um, <laughs> so, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. These, I like people pointing out that scene I just like I've, I've had a few like messages about that now and I'm just like that's so cool that's just like a random scene that suddenly is like people are like latching onto um which is kind of cool um, yeah. no, on it. Like we were, we weren't. At, I don't think we were really having them go there. And you know me, I, I'm a, like I said, I have things planned out. So he kind of turns his chapter and he's like, "Yay!" Like I, I threw in all these things, and I was like, ah, "Think of my set." <laughs> but I was like, "Oh, like so which one do we change?" And he's like, "I want them to go to Cologne." So like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what set on it, but yeah, no, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll change other things. <laughs> right. Well, I know that I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, grew up right in the heart of country music. So all of the music industry stuff was so fascinating to me, so interesting. What was it like to research that and to delve into this other world? The music stuff. Did a lot. Yeah, it was, um, it was fun. It was interesting. It was, um, it was good. I feel like I'm a pretty random music nerd a lot of the time already. So a lot of the stuff I kind of had this sort of base weird knowledge of um obviously industry stuff had to do a lot of reading about like boy bands in particular um but yeah it was it was really fun interesting there was a lot going on yep. so cool. yeah yep. um we had like a shared excel spreadsheet not spreadsheet like a shared document for a while we were kind of each taking different documentaries and like making notes in there for each other so we kind of split the work up so you know one of us is watching like a bts documentary another one's watching one direction um and just like making all the notes down so that we can enrich it um a lot of in online interviews a lot of um there are actually a lot of people online who do really useful videos, you know, things titled like the dark side of the music industry and mm -hmm. um, looked at the, the kind of things that Taylor Swift and Kesha and other artists have been through, you know, on the downside of things. Mm -hmm. I think the driest, that's, that's mean, I'm not going to use that word, erase, erase, um, <laughs> the, the, um, like the most useful by far thing that um we did was i, I put up my hand to read a uh, actual book about all the law and um wow. i think it's called everything you know about the music industry and i don't like that i use the word dry because it's actually very accessible and it's written in a really interesting way however it's not quite the same as watching a bts documentary like it's, it's a little bit more but that changed a, we basically had a whole edit after i read that book because we were like wow okay this is this is how everything's structured. This is everyone's roles. This would happen. This wouldn't happen. This is how long that would take. And that's, we learned a lot about contracts and um, what kind of things you would get in trouble for and what kind of language they might use to mess you around and that kind of stuff. So yeah. Very useful. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Like a whole book. Oh, wow. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see how the documentaries might be a little more fun to watch. <laughs> A little bit, <laughs> but yeah, I'm really glad that we did that. Excellent. So you created this whole made-up band, The Boys of Saturday, Saturday the Band, uh, with lyrics and fans, a whole universe that revolves around them. What was it like to, to make that universe and to make those lyrics? And were there any parts of the fandom that you had a really fun time exploring? Yeah, all of it. All of it was so much fun. It was it was great. Um, it was actually like I wrote quite a lot of lyrics that I end up deleting <laughs> because they were really, like I was like when I was trying to do my like serious like like this is what the serious song would be and then they were just bad because I'm not a songwriter. Um, so uh, yeah, I was like, these are terrible. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, that was. I think it's just fun. Like I mean, like it's it's a boy band. You know, they're they're really like i mean we really go into like the other side of it but at their heart you know there's, there's a lot of really fun stuff that they can do like their songs and stuff um yeah and i really liked doing the um the tweets that the of the fandoms <laughs> like those are really enjoyable they're, they're just there's a few of them they show up but just the uh, just putting getting into that voice of like this is the fandom you know tweeting or just random people um, right. was really really fun yeah you captured that really well I thought that you did a great job with that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so when it came to actually creating the world, um, we initially wrote six chapters that never ended up in the book. Um, so we actually started the book originally 
with the start of the boys meeting each other. Well, most some of them had already met and some of them were meeting for the first time. Um, so that's how we thought it would start. And then um, we had the same agent at the time. So we had all the stuff with them at camp and we sent it along and she said, look, this is really great, but it's starting in the wrong place. And because we were going to have like a really big time skip because he couldn't write two right. years worth of stuff and start the tour. Um, so, you know, we talked about it and we're like, yeah, she's definitely right. Um, so we started again and that six chapters is just off in email land somewhere. But the really good thing about that was it gave us a chance to see the characters meeting and what their dynamic was. So even though that never made it into the book, that put us in this really great position where we know who was friends with who and how their relationship developed and who had a crush on who and when and like that was just I think it really helped us jump in with these really rich characters so but when I write a book and I don't know if Kale feels the same like it takes me quite a while to get into the swing of things and to feel out the characters but we kind of did that beforehand so we didn't have to change go back and change as much I think yeah totally it was like a accidentally what super super well yeah because we had yeah. we knew their backstory like it was kind of already like we just innately like because we wrote it like we kind of we had figured it all out so then we could kind of yeah when it picks up and the pace is really fast because you know we've we get, we've done all that figuring it out so um, right. yeah which was cool um yeah and we agreed on a lot of things like very very easily Mm -hmm. like, I, yeah. I can still remember like us talking I can't remember who came up with the name Saturday I can't maybe Kale can but I do remember the conversation being like what's the band what should the band be called one of us went Saturday but like better than that and the other one was like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really you you definitely came up with Saturday I I didn't come up with Saturday um so you definitely came up with Saturday um but yeah something like that like yeah it was totally just like the like hang on like is this yeah um yeah yeah or is it? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and you guys had to write like whole song lyrics. Kale was talking about, and what was that like to write song lyrics? Because you guys normally write, you know, books. <laughs> song lyrics. I don't. Know. How did you go with it, Sophie? Um. Well, actually, there's a little bit of a backstory there. Um, one of the songs <laughs> was. Uh, <laughs> a song that I wrote in primary school for an assignment that I can still remember the lyrics to because I had to record it as part of the assignment. <laughs> but I, I think I tweaked the odd word. And then an, uh, another thing that I wrote was a poem that I wrote in um, year nine, but I can't remember if that ends up making it into the book off the top of my head, but I do remember taking a little bit of a poem that I wrote in year nine and turning it into a song. <laughs> right pre-existing love it <laughs> i love it i had like a really fun time like watching the boys rock out on stage and like that part was just so delightful and fun to watch but i also felt like the book did an excellent job of tackling heavy issues within the story as well so what was it like for you guys within your writing process to tackle balancing the the, the more heavier things alongside the romance and alongside the lighthearted fun um yeah it was kind of like it felt very natural I feel like a lot of the times like I think we sort of had it we had it very mapped out with the like the synopsis so we kind of knew where we sort of wanted to go um and then yeah it all just kind of I felt like it kind of flowed pretty well um it was just kind of the set of ended up being the direction it went into so we kind of which we agreed on earlier on and then kind of yeah. sort of happened that way um yeah. Yeah. Why don't you yeah, I think because it was, we weren't writing a book that's just about these two guys. You know, when we were first talking about, like, the very from the very start, the premise was that they're not allowed to be together. So, yeah, like Kale said, naturally from that, well, why aren't they allowed to be together? Because of X, Y, Z. Okay, so how does everyone else in the band feel about that? Is there, if management has this kind of style, how does that affect how they treat the other band members? Well, it would probably mean this, given that we know the personalities of these band members and this is how they would react to that kind of control from the management. Okay, so if that's how it was affecting them, what would they probably do? And it just kind of, yeah, I guess it snowballs. Like you take the premise and it just becomes the story. So the story is really about just that 
that premise that well, what happens if a if a group of boys sign a contract at sixteen before they really know what they're signing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I loved all the boys in the band. I felt like all the side characters were were well rounded, but they didn't feel like side characters. They just felt like other main characters. So, how did you go about crafting each of these characters individually? And do you have a favorite? Yeah, we totally do. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gotten really obvious who the favorite is as well. Um, but yeah, so like Angel from the start, like his name wasn't Angel. Like I mean, his name is still Reese, but. We had to um but Reese in those first chapters that we wrote, like I think our agent was like, You need to watch out for this character because he's like, <laughs> he's like run away with the book. <laughs> we were like, we kind of just want to like let him, like just like because right. like, 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 he's too much fun. And we both kind of like I don't know, like he's the one that I was like with just the character himself. Like we both picked up on him so quickly and just like he just sort of came from somewhere and was just there straight away. Um, yes. so, and we both just loved writing him. And so we kept giving him things to do and just sort of like notes and just, um, so yeah, so he was really, really fun. Um, John as well, I really like too. I don't want to like, I don't want to do it. I feel bad because like, but John's also, yeah, I, I, they all just kind of, I think we, yeah, from like, we had a very like, Early on, you know, I had a really long, like, we were talking for ages just about, like, the characters and sort of like that. And, like, once we kind of had them sort of mapped out, they kind of sort of took on their own kind of lives, really. Um, mm -hmm. it, it worked really well, I think, with both of us. Like, I feel like that could be somewhere that people run into difficulty if they're co-writing, if these characters are, like, clashing. But we always kind of seemed on the same page as to, like, the side characters out what they're sort of doing, um, which was cool. So, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I guess I, I have um, I have had a few people say, like, oh, you know, I've, I would have liked this to be an ensemble. But I, I take that as a compliment because it means that they connected with those side characters that we created. And I do think that at the end of the day, if this gets out, had to be about Zach and Ruben first and foremost. Mm -hmm. um, that I'm not going to say that that was the most important story. Honestly, all four of them have very important stories, but that was the one that we were most equipped mm -hmm. to delve into. Um, we could address some things from Angel and John's stories, but probably we're not the best authors to, you know, really centre that story on them and give it the justice that it would have deserved. Um, but at the same time, some of my favourite books have been ones where, you know, you have the main characters, the main, like, central characters, but then the characters around them are still really fully formed and memorable and, you know, you can still, I mean, one example I can think of is uh, I really, really enjoyed Cassandra Clare's book when, books when I was younger and I still do, but particularly when I was younger, I was like, oh, you know, I had to have every book the day it released. And um, I can, I can, I can't even remember the plot of some of the first ones, like, not really, but I can remember those characters. I can remember what they looked like. I can remember what they spoke like. I can remember who liked who and who hated who. I can tell you all that. That is the sign of someone who's created really good surrounding characters. And I think that's what often takes a story from really good to really good. Yeah, that's excellent. That is awesome. So <laughs> when I was reading it, I felt like this book had a little bit of crossover appeal into new adult. You guys, um, uh, did you consider that in the writing process? Do you have thoughts on that at all? Wednesday Books likes that. Uh, that is Wednesday Books' identity. It kind of actually was born from wanting to lean more new adult. Mm -hmm. So certainly um, there was a lot of encouragement from the start um, <laughs> from, my, from my editors saying, like, don't worry, you know, like, obviously there are, you have to be careful about that boundary, but it's like, Make it crossover, absolutely. Like, don't be afraid to like push the boundary a little bit. So. Yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> Kale? Yeah, yeah. No, I think it was. Um, yeah, it just sort of. Yeah, definitely that. Yeah, it was. Um, a choice. So, yeah. There were definitely times where like we had to take some things out because I think maybe it went a little bit over yeah. the line. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah, no, that was, yeah, yeah. Some of the scenes are a little bit like that's a little bit too racy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, so but then you know, I mean, that's that's what editing's for. So you know, it's, right. um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, right. Um, so what are both of you most excited for people to see within this book, whether that is like a funny scene that you're like, oh, I can't wait for people to see this hilarious moment. Or if it's more of like a serious takeaway that you're hoping people get from the book, like what do you want people to see when you, when they get this book? That's a good question. Um, my first thought is I feel like Sophie's chapter five, the ending of that one. Uh, which is might be a, yeah, that one. I think she did a really good job with that. So like, I think that's, I mean, that's a standout scene. Um, I remember reading that. Um, that's their first, uh, it's a spoiler, but yeah, their first kiss scene. Um, and I, so we like, and this had been like, we, we've been waiting for this for ages because it had been like, we'd written the the camp, like the first chapters that we end up deleting or not deleting, but not using and we started again. And then so it got to chapter five and I was like, oh my God, this is the scene where like, and it's actually going to start. Um, and and it's like, it's like Sophie was talking about like the when you get in like a new chapter it's how exciting and I was like oh my god it's chapter five like this is so exciting um and she just like knocked it out of the park like it was so good um so I think yeah that chapter I'm just, like it's gonna be special yeah so yeah I would say that one um, yeah yeah can I say a few things <laughs> there are so many all of these Oh, yes. Um, so, one, um, I think that, like, I, I've seen a lot of people really resonate with Kale's character, Zach, um, in two particular areas. One is his experience with exploring bisexuality, um, and another is his, um, he's done a really, really good job of creating this character who's a total people pleaser. And I don't, it's not a character that I can really think, think of reading about very many times, like not quite the way that Kale, I think Kale did a really great job with that. So Zach is just totally, totally like focused on what other people want and what other people need. And he actually needs to like go through this journey to kind of see the downsides of that um, without any spoilers. So I think that, you know, that I think there are going to be some people who really relate to that and come away from it going like, oh, like maybe I've learned a couple of things. Um, the third, uh, third the second um, <laughs> I can count um, the second is I really hope that some people come away from this with an understanding of what the entertainment industry can be like the dark sides of that and what some of their favorite celebrities or some of the people out there are actually going through and whether that causes them to double you know think again on how they might act or anything that they can do to support them or help them or even if they're in that situation to know hey you know you've got to slow it down um get some extra advice anything like that I think that spreading that awareness mm -hmm. is really important um especially because there is um uh I, I I'm not going to say, I was going to say, I just watched this thing today, but I watched a thing today that's very new, so I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Um, so I'm just not going to mention what <laughs> specific. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, so I was watching a show today that mentioned that people think that coming out is really easy and that there is no stigma anymore and that everything, you know, like it's just fine, we're so progressive now. And it's like, yeah, we are We are making steps forward, but it's certainly not, like in any big industry, it's still very, very slow to get there because at the end of the day, there are still so many people out there who you know, might not really be as supportive as we would like. And unfortunately, a lot of, particularly in the entertainment industry, they still see those as customers. So, you know, there are still like, just on a systemic level, so many problems still. Um, so I think that that's a really important message to put out there. And I'm sorry, this is a really long answer. Um, number three is 70%. 70%. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about too. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You read that part, and I was like, ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we take it. We take it to a place in at the seventy percent mark. 
Yeah, um, it is. It is a place. It's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I was like, no, no, like, I was like, no smiling. I was like, yeah, yeah. Smiling, but yes. <laughs> as soon as you say seventy percent, I was like. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. so exactly what you mean. <laughs> oh my goodness, that lovely answers from both of you. Um, and Sophie, another answer from you. A uh, little birdie told me that you did the cover art for this. Can you talk oh, a little you. bit about like how that came about, what went into it, also how beautiful this cover is? Oh, thank you. Yeah, that that's cool. I haven't really talked about this before. Um, ooh, so. Uh, in the middle of lockdown, because I was in the big seven-month lockdown in Melbourne, um, mm-hmm. I got an iPad and I got a drawing app and I started drawing and um, I used to love art uh, when I was young, like quite young. Um, kind of dropped off probably halfway through high school and I, I'd forgotten how much I loved it. So I was just really enjoying it doing like pictures of my characters. Um, I think we were like, we were starting to, I think we just announced if this gets out at that point. So I was like, oh, that would be a really good time to like start doing some art. And like, um, I think I actually, correct me if I'm wrong. No, I did. I did um, a picture of all four boys for the day that we announced. So we put that up. Um, it was called Off the Record then, the book, but we, we put that up with the book title like when we announced it. Um, <laughs> I can remember that because I can remember people on Twitter like going through it and being like, this is this person and this is that person. <laughs> No, <laughs> yeah, first experience of that, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so that was fun. Um, but like, I knew for myself, I had actual people that I was like not like copying but using kind of as references for drawing. I was like, they are not any of those people, they aren't even musicians. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, I'm getting off topic. Um, and one of them I put on Instagram, I think I actually put it up this way like it was basically this but less good on instagram and um we were like waiting to hear about the the cover and wednesday books had been like yeah we're gonna go illustrated um so we were so excited (laughs) they just like sent us an email like cover and we're like oh my gosh and we open it and it is like my picture (laughs) Um, they'd like done a mock-up of my picture. They'd just stolen it from Instagram and like <laughs> mocked up where the title would be and like, um, you know, mocked up like the crowd in the corner and all that. And they're like, here you go. And I was like, hmm? like that. <laughs> I am not a professional. <laughs> I just got an iPad. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, they were like, yep, yeah, you know, we, we saw it on Instagram and um, we really, really liked it. Um, so that was like so flattering um yeah. it was actually it was a lot of work i'm not gonna lie um it was because uh, you know it's not just something you're putting on instagram it is like something that's going to be on your book for a long time and i was right. like i'm not a professional i i'm a professional writer i know how to do that <laughs> i don't know how to draw so i was just like it was terrifying not like absolutely terrifying i'm sending kale like Every single day, like updated things. Like, is this good? Is this good? Every single line had to be perfect. Just terrifying. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I think I I looked up like all these different color schemes that existed mm-hmm. online and like tried out all the different ones because uh, I'm, I'm just gonna say it. Um, the original mocker. I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say a secret. The original mocker was uh it was blue and green and that was just they, they had just the drawing that i did was not blue and green the drawing that i did was like ruben was in cream and zach was in like khaki but they, they were like oh we want more color how about blue and green and there are reasons why i thought that would be a bad idea <laughs> i was like i was so like can i do another color <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> Um, so I tried every color combination in the world except for blue and green yes. and um, I think I we'd finalized it with like a couple of different ones that everyone kind of liked and then um, in the end most people liked this combination so I sent that off 
to the um, cover designer. She said, yep, you know, we love that. And it went from there. Unfortunately, it turns out that I had no idea. I swear I had no idea, but some people on Twitter discovered that if you invert this, it becomes blue and green. So I didn't really... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's no escape. <laughs> 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 I did not think that is Yeah, I, I bet those people that won't believe you as well, they'll be like, no, like, absolutely, <laughs> it was a design choice, like purple, because it becomes like it inverts to um, blue. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't yeah. know enough about color theory for that to have occurred to me, I swear. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> That's so insane that you not only wrote this, but you also did the cover art. That is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, like, it's how very cool. Cool. Yeah. Like, It's like, I love it so much. Like, it's like, so good. Yeah. So it's, it's like, so yeah. So I feel like you deserve like all the applause because like you like <laughs> wrote it and then like, yeah, every, yeah, it's amazing. And I do, I'll just like sit in my room and like turn it one way and then turn it the other and just like look at both of them together. <laughs> No, the original way is upside down. So, you know, wow. yeah. yeah. I love that. So what is coming up next for both of you? Last question for me before we get to audience questions. What is coming up next for both of you? I mean, aside from this gorgeous book and uh, where can readers find out more about you and your books? Uh, yeah, so, okay, so my next book's called The Plague, um, and so it's a YA horror novel, um, it's also a gay, yes, so it's very, very fun, I'm working on it now, um, I'm having a blast, <laughs> um, it's really, really fun, um, yeah, and so more about that should be fairly soon, um, the draft's due at the end of the month, so I'm getting that done, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, really, I'm really enjoying it, and then, yeah. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at Kale R. Dietrich or just on Twitter at Kale Dietrich. So, yeah. Great. Cool. Um, my next one is a sapphic rom-com. It's called The One That Got Away. <laughs> it's um, It should come out sometime next year, um, as long as I have my deadline. I will, I promise. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's about a girl whose cheating ex-boyfriend becomes famous by proxy because his sister marries royalty so think like Pippa Middleton style fame mm -hmm. um, and he gets chosen to be on a bachelor style dating show where he redates all of his exes to find the one that got away so <laughs> um, the main character Maya decides that she's gonna sign up to go and redate him um, to get to the final so that she can break his heart on live television and expose him for the kind of person that he really is rather than the kind of person he tries to present himself as. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she chooses to team up with the girl that he cheated on her with to get her revenge and finds out that actually maybe she shares her ex-boyfriend's taste in women. <laughs> I'm so excited for it, Sophie. I'm so excited. Thank you. Um, oh, and where can you find me? Uh, at S. Gonzalez Author at Twitter and Instagram. Incredible. I love it. Well, now I believe we are going to look at some... Um, questions from the people watching us uh question from twitter if you could fan cast the characters in a film adaptation who would be your dream choice actors could be any actors from any point in time do you have anyone do you have any ideas um i'm really annoying because i really like my dream is always to like find someone who is perfect for the character and maybe hasn't had like a break in the movie industry yet and kind of give the role to them so they like that gets to be their first big project and people like know that person as that role um so that is like when I think about that I'm like oh but you know <laughs> uh, yeah I, I, I don't know I'm boring Kale yeah <laughs> I kind of have one, like I sort of like, like very temporary, like I'm not sure, but I think his name's Joshua Bassett, I think. Is the, <laughs> and I is, yeah. I like, wait, is, like, wait, like the one that was the, the song. Rodrigo, dude. I'm like, Rodrigo? I don't oh, know if he's a little bit. 
And I'm like, that could work. I don't know why, but I, I, I like his hair. <laughs> so that's it. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna be able to think about now. Please <laughs> accomplish. Is it a bad joke? I'm like, I'm like, no, I, I don't know. I just think he's cool. And um, yeah, anyway, that's it. That's really fun. Um, another question. We would love to hear more about the inspirations for the title and where that came from. That's a story. Kale's really good at titles, is the summary. <laughs> So, so it had, it was called Off the Record originally, um, which was one, um, was we, we had a, actually we called it a few different things before. It was like called Collab and then it was just called like other things. Um, yeah. And then we got to the point where we were like, okay, we have to tell other people about this. We need an actual title. Um, so Sophie and I were like bouncing like ideas around a lot. Um, and then I, I found Off the Record by, this is the title that didn't end up getting used anyway, but I found it for Google um, I was searching like secrets and then just going into like synonyms oh. with words that are similar. And you know how it brings up that drop down menu of other things. And then one of them was off the record and I was like, hang on. <laughs> and then I was like, that works. In that's great. Um, so that's how I came out with off the record. And then if this gets out, when we decided we were going to change it, so we're like, cool, we'll change it. Um, if this gets out, it was a line someone said in a show from something. And again, we got to the same point where we were bouncing around ideas and I was kind of like, what about if this gets out? And then, like, I was a bit like, I was like, hang on. And then Sophie was like, oh, my God. And it was like, and they were like, hang on. And then, like, it kind of went from there. Um, but there was also, like, I really like those titles, but there was probably about 50 other ones that were, like, <laughs> garbage. <laughs> like, it also did not. Do not see the, line oh, the relief. Oh, the relief when Kale came up with the second good title. Yeah. There, was, there was a good reason we couldn't use off the record. Like that's fine, but you know, it kind of had that double meaning that we really liked. That if this gets out, has another double meaning. It's, it's yeah. not music related, but like, I was like, oh my god, you did it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really fast too, right? Like I feel like it was like we decided to change it, and then it was like like that afternoon or something I was like if this gets out like that kind of and everyone just seemed to like it just kind of clicked and we're like cool that's yeah. like, um because I really like it as the title now like I wouldn't want to change it like right. definitely not um so uh yeah and I, I'm pretty sure it was a line from a show that I was watching it was probably some random terrible tv show <laughs> um <laughs> that I was like it um and it just stuck in my brain I was like um and they weren't talking about it in anything to do with like the book or anything it's just was you know they were just edit and i was like right oh. yeah love it uh question from kate e this book focuses on the music industry but what are your favorite music artists to listen to and side note kale totally got me hooked on water parks a few months ago yeah okay oh okay yeah. cool yeah <laughs> okay. so if you want to go first uh, me um i i really like um let live i really like dance gavin dance i really like ice nine kills sonata arctica which is like a finnish metal band <laughs> um i yeah i i like individual songs more than i like artists so it has to be like i'm, I'm pretty picky like if, if if i like an artist it's usually because they're like really really good at like metal or punk or something like that <laughs> You're so cool. You're just like, you're just yeah, like, yeah, very cool. like yeah, no, I was like, I need to look those up because like my my tastes are like terrible. Um, but yeah, no, so yeah, I love the Killers. The Killers are my number one favorite band of all time. I'm obsessed with them. Um, they're, um, they're doing a song with Bruce Springsteen, and I'm just so hyped. Um, and I just like you know, whenever I see a show, I'm, there's always like there's all these people older than me there, and I'm like, yeah, that's <laughs> great. Um, so that's good. I really like that. Um, Killers also really like Water Parks. Um, and then, but lately I've been listening to Olivia Rodrigo again, that album. That's great. I love it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to, but I'm like, this. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you listening to it as well? No, I'm laughing because you mentioned Joshua Bassa and Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah, yeah, I'm down with the kids. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, not even try. Yeah, um, but yeah. And do you guys have a favorite boy band? Each of you? 
Do you? <laughs> I I like a lot of boy bands straight up. Like I, I loved Backstreet Boys when I was young. I was definitely more Backstreet than NSYNC, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the, the one that I like the most songs of is definitely One Direction. Um, mm-hmm. I was kind of, yeah, I didn't really like listen to any of their stuff until I was quite, like it was almost like at the very end of their um that kind of thing like I kind of started listening to him I was like oh wow actually <laughs> okay yeah I've always I haven't had like a, a one particular boy band that I've been super obsessed with I've always just kind of general liked them um oh, so yeah. like one of them, there's a lot of songs of theirs that I like um yeah like like no control great song <laughs> uh, so like just random songs like that that I would really like um, yeah, Backstreet, like Backstreet's Back is great. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. yeah. Does that as well? What? Um, all you people, can't you see, can't you see how long? <laughs> Author, artist, singer, Sophie Gonzalez, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Larger Than Life is their best song. Come on, Kale. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I have to have like a debate after this, like going on which one. Um, but yeah, no, I think they're, they're just they're good. Like I, I, I like them. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's for a jam. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Question from Shannon: What Saturday merch would you buy or imagine at their concerts? T-shirts, apparel, poster, photo book, etc. What's their merch? Someone's already made a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I think I yeah. saw it actually. Yeah. That's not the answer to the question, but I was like, oh. <laughs> so obviously there'd be shirts. Um, yeah. like hoodies, you'd have to have hoodies. We mentioned hoodies so often in the story. Yeah. I think you'd have to have that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Posters, you'd have, yeah, you'd have to have the posters. You know, you would have to get your hands on the posters of Ruben and John from the top 50 list you would need to have that in your room like you couldn't consider yourself a true fan if you didn't have that I think <laughs> um I'm like this is this is putting me on the spot it just shows how few times I actually go and buy merchandise when I go to concerts yeah. I'm like, it's, it's so expensive it's like like I'll, I'll always get it I'll try and get a t-shirt but it's always like they're always ridiculously priced so yeah um <laughs> But yeah, I feel like, I don't know, Saturday would have some good hoodies. I feel like they would do, um, I don't know if they would do vinyls. I feel like they probably would. That seems to be a big thing now. Um, like, you know, like the Taylor Swift, like Evermore kind of that whole thing. Um, but yeah, so I can see them maybe doing that. Um, but I yeah. Towels. Would you want to just like sit what? on a beach towel? <laughs> oh, a beach towel? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, like, I would have, like like Saturday would have like they would have their their legit merch that they would have at a show and then they would have like the target merch which would be like the beach towels and stuff like that like they would have it all which would be kind of like, um, Actually, like you know, a- um i thought it was the creepiest thing i'd ever seen when i went to when me and Cameron went to london the first time we went into like a souvenir store and they had like the faces of the One Direction boys with the eye holes cut out, so you can just put their face on your face. <laughs> oh my god! What that to be? That was totally me for Saturday. Totally. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. That was every concert. Wow. And another question we have: No spoilers for the "If This Gets Out" book ending, but have either of you thought about a potential sequel? <laughs> the looks on your face right now. <laughs> is a, is that an answer? There's room for a sequel. There's not a sequel planned, but it, it's it's one of those endings where we, without spoilers, um, it was pretty important to us to not make every single little thing work out perfectly. Um, I don't. I don't think that's too much of a spoiler to say. So, I think that for us, given what we know about the music industry, if everything had worked out 
perfectly in a neat little bow, it would have taken away the gravity of what they went through in the book and it would kind of be minimizing what real people go through. That's how we felt. Like, if it's so easy to fix, then why do people, why is it such a big problem in the real world? And that's the opposite of the message that we wanted to send. However, we don't want to, you know, make everything doom and gloom either. So what we wanted to do was kind of strike that balance. Um, so what that means is it, it could end here and it's a complete story in itself where you, the reader, can, I think there's enough information in there for you to be able to guess how things go. Honestly, I don't think that we've left it too open-ended. You should be able to figure out right. what the next few years would roughly look like. However, there is enough in there that we could – there's easily enough content for a second book, and we've talked about – I think I feel like I've taken over this question, so I'll let Kale like, do it in a sec. But I was just going to say there's one character in particular who we know is not cishet by any means, and – we 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 decided to see where the story went and for us we didn't feel that the character was at a place yet where they would necessarily be ready to acknowledge that about themselves so we're not going to call it can rep by any means because it's not on the page but we know it and if there was a sequel that would definitely be addressed okay awesome. yeah well that's the thing i feel like just like the way the characters kind of sort of happens like like i feel like they're just like the ending, it feels kind of like the ending point of that part of their lives, which is like, that's my favorite kind of like, like everything is resolved and it's a complete storyline, but like they feel like real people to like, like, so this, you can see like their lives would continue on after that. And that's what I, I really like about the ending is that, you know, there's, there's that. So that does leave room for things if there's like, because you know, I like you just kind of picture what they're going to be doing next, you know, like how, like what they would be up to, like, you know. Um, which I think is cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, there's just one more thing that I'd want to add. Like, I think, um, again, without trying not to spoil too much, um, there's a storyline that kind of looks at emotional abuse of a parent. Um, there's actually kind of two, really, but the main one, the one that's focused on more. Um, so what I that's definitely something that I would want to look at more in a sequel but at the same time um what I what I really wanted to do by the end of that story was kind of demonstrate that it's not for people in real life it's not as simple as just you know it's it's not always as simple as like fixing it you know when it comes to things like that when you're dealing with someone who's a member of your family it's it's there's not always this clean you know okay well now everything's great like it, it's not that simple sometimes there's a lot of stages that people go through and sometimes they'll kind of they'll try something and it might make everything bearable or you know to the point where okay I, I can live with this this is I'm happy to accept this for whatever reason or they might try that and find it actually you know this isn't working the way that I hoped it would I'm going to have to set some harsher boundaries or take some extra steps so I didn't I didn't think it was there was really enough time to go through that whole process in one book so that's definitely something that could be explored more what happens now that some boundaries have been set what changes what doesn't is there anything else that needs to be done there yeah excellent <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both so much for this lovely conversation. It's also lovely to just see your faces after having like interacted with you both on the last couple of months. Like it's just lovely to like feel like I'm finally meeting you. Yeah. I mean, I've seen your face. <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> you guys <laughs> Definitely. And it's going to meet you. Yes, yeah, so lovely. And a reminder for everyone watching to pre-order this book if this gets out. In case you haven't heard the title, as we've talked about it several times. Excellent. Uh, yeah. And you pre-order through the store I work at, East City Bookshop. You can get a signed book plate from these two, which is very exciting to get the signed book plate for them because they're located in Australia. And those signatures are hard to come by. So pre-order. I believe that um, the Pride Bookless account has dropped the link in there. It's eastcitybookshop.com slash if this gets out. So pre-order the book. It comes out December 7th. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss this one. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs>